I'm not a big fan of the what if game, but what if, while there is no evidence that these e-cigarettes are causing cancer or that they are n nearly as bad for you as cigarettes, there isn't much evidence on the contrary as well. You know, these, as you said, these, these have only been out for five to seven years. Um, playing the what if game 10, 15, 20 years down the road, a lot of these chemicals in these e-cigarettes, especially the ones not made by the huge companies, there are a lot of chemicals in there, and what if it comes out that, yeah, a lot of these are bad? Now we've got this um, dilemma where we have people hooked on cigarettes and e-cigarettes. Now we've got two battles to fight. Well, so, so the question is really, what is going to be the effect of electronic cigarettes on overall cigarette consumption? Because that's what's going to determine what the public health benefits are, if there are benefits. And the evidence right now suggests that there's a huge number of smokers who are, who are either quitting completely or cutting down greatly. There's two areas where harms could come in. One is, as you're suggesting, what if people are switching to electronic cigarettes or using electronic cigarettes instead of quitting? So what is the evidence on that? Well, the evidence suggests that there is absolutely no risk of that happening because the people who are using electronic cigarettes, for the most part, are smokers who are unable to quit smoking. If a smoker is able to quit without electronic cigarettes, they do it. If they're able to quit with a nicotine patch, they do it. These are products that are, are used as alternatives for smokers who are unable to quit. And so, yes, this scenario could happen that many years down the road, uh, someone may have been diverted to electronic cigarettes, but if that person hadn't been diverted to electronic cigarettes... They may have just died from regular cigarettes. They would have died from, from cigarettes. They would have had problems. As I said, one out of every two people who smokes regularly is going to die from their smoking. And so if we know that 97% of smokers one year from now are, going to con are still going to be smokers, why not try to transition, even if it's 20% or 30% of those people, over to e-cigarettes or to even dual use? That is going to have great public health benefits. But what about the people who would not have touched cigarettes or e-cigarettes um, or any, any nicotine product are now introduced to these um, light fruit flavored hookah pens that give them the nicotine fix that they probably never would have had. There's no question that yes, there are, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely worse to use nicotine than not to use nicotine and nicotine itself does have some dangers. However, everything in public health is a balancing. You have to weigh the benefits against the costs. And in this case, the benefits are so immense. Getting these long-term smokers who've smoked for 30 or 40 years, three, four packs a day, getting them to quit smoking or to drastically reduce their smoking versus this phenomenon where uh, you get young people kind of trying these, these products. Right now, that balance is way on the side of the benefits over the harms. But I think most importantly, what we need is the right type of marketing of these products because if they're marketed as these cool devices, digital devices that are really cool things for young adults to try, then yes, we're going to see a lot more college age students using these things. They, we want them marketed very differently. We want them marketed to smokers. We want them marketed as these are devices for people who are trying to quit smoking because they're addicted and they were, they're, they're sorry that they ever began. We want it so that when people look at e-cigarettes, they don't see this cool digital uh, hookah-like device. What they see is a, is, is a crutch that so many addicted smokers have to go to now because they made the decision, the poor decision, when they to were young. Smoking. So I think what we need is we need much more sensible regulations that recognize that these products are not tobacco products, that they are in a separate category and we need to try to create incentives to get people to switch from the combustible types toward the, um, towards these, these non-combustibles. And there is the potential, if we play our cards right, that literally half of smokers could switch to vapor products that contain no tobacco and that involve no combustion. That would be literally the greatest public health story of my lifetime.